I'm Hunter. I'm Rebecca. I'm Caitlin. I'm Nessa. This is the Family Show. Howdy folks, one of my top 100 games of all time. I'm Hunter, and this is Rebecca, the tour guide through this tour of insanity. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? A, what brought this on? Today, today, <laughs> today we're looking at my 60 to 51, the top hat, top piece to my bottom half. <laughs> Man, we are on the crazy train. All right. I am not the uh, conductor. Let's, t- let's take it down a notch. Yeah, let's... We're going to do some stats. Oh, stats always, put you to that always calms everyone down. <laughs> All right. The set of 10. We got five that went down, one that went up. That leaves four new games. How exciting. Four new games. Look at that. There is four of them. There are <laughs> four of them? Here we go. Here we go. Got to unveil the greatness. All right. Let's start it off. Let's start it off with number 60. The longest name in board gaming. You can fact check me on that. Really? My number 60 is Sidereal Confluence, Trading and Negotiation in the Elysian Quadrant. That's the actual name of that game? Why'd they do that to it? Sidereal Confluence, Trading and Negotiation in the Elysian Quadrant is... Pit, you know, if you were following along, spoilers, my last one was Pit. This is the Pit the Heavy Euro game. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> it's cool, though. So, in Sidereal Con, that's why these two landed apart, right, right next to each other. One is the, the bare bone streamlined version, and this is the, the buy the entire package with the extended warranty. And the kitchen sink. <laughs> so, in Sidereal Confluence, you are literally cube pushing. This is a true cube pusher in space. So basically, the way it is is you have, you have a handful of different kinds of cubes <sighs> oh, that you have each turn. You're going to take those cubes, you're going to run them through contraptions, and it's going to spit out different kinds of cubes. You know, <laughs> if I hadn't played this game, I'd say, you're not selling it to me, boss. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the thing is, you never have the cubes you need to run your engines. You have crappy green cubes... You need some awesome blue cubes. So what do you do? You look at your neighbor and go, Hey, neighbor. <laughs> I got some green cubes. You look at, you got some blue cubes. You want to trade? And this is all happening in real time insanity. So you told you there's a phase of trading. Trade, 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 trade cubes. Trading cubes. This person has wild cubes that can be any color. We're trading cubes. Trade, 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 trade. And then you run all your engines. You create technologies and advancements. You get better engines. You go out and you purchase colony. You do research. Research makes better better things. Better, better. cubes. Basically, you turn, it takes your crappy engine and makes it into a cool engine. Sounds 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 weird, but it, it is. It's actually weird. pretty fun. But what it is is the the main the main thing is you're all it's a, it's a big player game. This game plays up to nine players. Yes, right? nine players. So it plays up to it nine. Starts with four players as a requirement. So you play. So it's basically a, a real time trading game. So that's that. At its it's got two two distinct. It's it's game of halvesies. I like game of halvesies. First half is kind of you're trading oh. cubes. You're it's real time. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is like crazy negotiation, aggressive trading. Pit style trading that's going on. Then you then it kind of calms down. You run your engines. You do your technologies. You buy some colonies. You get planets that give you superpowers. That gives you basically basically gives you cubes. You buy research. You acquire research that you can do that that gives you more advanced technologies. That basically more ways to run run cubes through the thing. And all an effort to get various victory points. You get victory points for, for mainly for research because later on you're eventually going to research technologies that takes cubes and you run them and you get victory points. It spits out victory points. Top of all that, every player around the table is playing a game in a completely different way. Yeah, I was just gonna. They have that. the races cool. are extremely asymmetrical. Some yeah. people are better at research. Some people, like I said, have those wild cubes yeah. that can be any color. One person has, like, ships that they have to power, that powers their in- your engine. Other people, like, they attack people. Some people help you out, but you got to owe them money and thing, victory yeah. points for, yeah, for, for them helping you out. Yeah. Every race is completely different. They all interact in different ways. Um, it's not a game that you can set back and be... 
Be set on your laurels. Get off your laurels and you trade. You have to get off your laurels and trade. You got to get going. <laughs> you have to get in it. So really, in a lot of ways, it is a lot like Pitt in the fact that the person who is out there aggressively training, looking at people, what people need, yeah. talking and understanding, okay, Rebecca, really, she's the she needs green cubes like crazy. I don't have any green cubes, but Joe over there has green cubes, and he needs yellow cubes, and I have yellow cubes. So I trade him yellow cubes for green cubes. I trade green cubes for blue, blue cubes, and it's just all kinds of craziness around the table. Yeah, this would not be a good game for a wallflower. No, though. not at this all. This is not, again, it's like Pitt. It's definitely certain personality types do better with this game. But it's it's a fun game. It's very it's very interactive, very high energy. It's not mm-hmm. a game that you're you wanna be half asleep playing. It's it's a high energy game. I love games like that. I love interactive games, I love asymmetrical games. Mm-hmm. Um, I find that a lot of games are not a lot of games, but I really enjoy games that have that real time trading aspect to it. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the yeah, mega cool. games have real time trading situations that you're put in. Uh, Civilization, Mega Civilization has the same, as far as I know, I've never played it, I really, really want to play it someday. It's one of my Grail play games. Is there such thing as a Grail games you want to play? Anyway, I really want to play that game because it has yeah. pit trading as well. It has, it's a, my oh, understanding, really? okay. it has, it has basically your different countries and you have different resources and yeah. you trade resources the same way with other countries or, you know, other, I guess they're countries. Um, same kind of way in, in a what from my understanding again I haven't played this kind of pit style trading as well. Hmm. I just like it. I think it's very interactive. It's a great way to get people into the game. You feel like you're really, I mean, Doing just stuff it's it's yeah. like you're involved in the game. It's not like you know, it's just it's it, it it's, it's it's very immersive. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like in, in a tra- in a drafting game, you kind of look at your cards and pass. Look at your cards. It's not. It, it, this is your in it you're you you're you're involved and and your understanding of what people need and don't need is very important you have to really get get into the game yeah. i love it love it one of my faves i'm playing it at bgg con we'll have a we'll have a a, a uh, post con report on how it goes Ooh. we're playing with all nine races wow including the attacky race that'll be interesting i've never played with the attacky race That'll be cool. One race is uh, they attack other people, supposedly. Something. I don't is know. Is that why you call it attacky? So this was my number 60. It dropped from 56, only four places, because I love it. My number 59 is an old school favorite. Okay. It dropped eight places, so it's holding strong as well. Okay. And that is Mission Red Planet. Well, I didn't realize this is still so high up on your list. That's I love this game. Yeah. Because yeah. you can blow up people's ships. It's hilarious. It's, it is pretty funny. Anyway, this is, uh, if you've ever played the game Citadels, it has a sim- similar yeah. kind of thing, except you have your own hand of cards that have, I think there are nine people, just like in Citadels. Yeah. Maybe, yep. maybe nine people. Yeah, there's nine cards. And you basically, each turn, you're going to pick one, and you're going to play it. Sure. And um, you go in order from smallest to largest. Yeah, smallest to largest. Yeah, largest to smallest. Countdown. Countdown. They count in this game. It counts down. So it's largest to smallest, and they fire off, and they, each one of those cards that you play is basically an action, and all of them are extremely different. So basically, the goal is you're going to be sending astronauts to Mars to colonize it. It's area control, you're trying to get area control on the board. Um, so the some of the cards will let you put guys on a ship that's going to go to a location on Mars. Some of them will let you blow up ships. Some will have a ship launch early. Some will, it has all kinds of different effects. Some of them let you move guys around on Mars. It's, they're all very different. Um, you're going to play through those cards. And eventually you're going to play a card that is a crappy card that gives you all your cards back so you can start going again. So you got to kind of judge when do you want to reset your deck. It's, again, it's got area control on Mars. It has cards that you can get in the game that mm-hmm. go underneath different areas and it influences that area. Maybe second place wins instead of first place. Or maybe only the first person is going to get something. No one else gets anything. Different. It has different effects on the area. Yeah, they're fun. Um, but the, at its heart, it's that action, that card, simultaneous action selection through the cards that uh, are fun. And it's just hilarious. Ships blow up and things go. To, like you got this one ship that's got your dudes on it. It's going to go to a place that's going to help you. Instead, they send it over to here to some <laughs> I was other place. Say, that's my favorite one is when you're <laughs> sends all Sends it over here to where it doesn't do any, any good. And someone sends it somewhere else. It's, yeah. just, it's just a fun game. It's, it's very, <laughs> uh, again, I it's like that everyone kind of plays at the same time kind of thing. It's just I enjoy it. It's a fun one. It's got, uh, I like area control games. Uh, it's got 
you know, kind of a, I don't want to say point salad but there's lots of different ways to kind of gain, yeah. gain victory points. Yeah. has in-game scoring going on. Yeah, it's great fun. game, great game. It's Love hilarious. it. Mission Red Planet. Hilarious. All right, so if you were listening last time. I wasn't. Last time I did a preview of this list. If you watched it first, good for you. If you didn't, then this is going to be a surprise. <laughs> I said there's four new games. We've reached the alternating new old section. We're going new old, new old, new old. Four new games. New old. New old, new old, new old, new old. Yeah, that many. Exciting. And this is the first one. This is the first new game. It's new. It's new. It's it's one of those of the kingdom games. Ooh. And this is Architects. Architects. Of the West Kingdom. Oh, very good. Architects of the West Kingdom. It's a new game. It came out, I want to say it came out last year, but we just played it. Not too long ago. Since when I made my list last. Yeah. So Architects of West Kingdom, this is another one in the long series of renegade games. You have like you had all the Raiders of the North Sea and Explorers of the North Sea, all the North Sea ones. Now there's a series of the West Kingdom. We have Architects of the West Kingdom and now oh, recently yeah. Yeah, we have right. Paladins of the West Kingdom. That was not on the list because I played it after after I made this list. So mm, it's not okay. on on this list. Yeah, Love this game. Cool. It's a favorite one a favorite of mine. It is a worker placement game. It's got some cool things going. It's yep. got the whole, whole lots of different workers going to lots of different places. Yeah. It has a cool kind of tricked up worker pla- placement mechanism. As you put more workers at a spot, that spot becomes more powerful for you. But someone can go to a spot and throw your workers in jail. And basically it, re- it pulls your workers off that spot, resets the spot, and then you have to kind of go through some convolution to get those guys, those workers back. Um, but it's got a lot of things going on, a lot of different paths to victory. Um, it's a solid, solid worker placement game. I love it. I love it. Love it. There's but, a sp- but spoiler, spoiler for next year. Yeah. I like Paladins even better. Really? Wow. That's saying something, because this is pretty solid. I love Architects. And you I love like... throwing my people in jail. I so. love throwing people in jail. So And yeah, no they're... loitering. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they put them in such small boxes. That's true, because you really struggle to put everything back in when you're done, right? Uh, is this one put... as bad as the uh, other? Paladins was chock full. This one's Although not, this one's not, not so space. bad. Nah, you got space in this. Kind of. What? What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> Architects of the West Kingdom. Yeah, it's it's a worker placement game. It's it's uh, kind of the whole resource management contracts. You get dudes to help you out, that sort of thing. Yeah, it's got a lot of, a lot of cool things going on. If you're looking for a solid worker placement game, it does something a little different though. Yeah, like... it's kind of tricked up. I mean, mm-hmm. there there are. I think I can't think any of the top of my head, but I'm sure there's other games where the more workers you put on a spot, the more powerful that spot gets. Maybe, but, but there's not the whole throw in jail thing. Yeah, I was gonna say because in a lot of most worker placement games, you do all your stuff, then all your workers come home at some point, right? Yeah, this that is... doesn't do that. This doesn't do that. They mm-hmm. get thrown in jail. Yeah, or I think there's a way that you can bring them back. Yeah, so they don't get there thrown in jail. Things. Yeah, there's but, uh, things, but it's just a, it's a really cool worker placement game. Got a lot going on. If you like Raiders of the North Sea. Yeah, and that series of games again. That's it. They're they're they all have the same vibe. Yeah, but they're all different. Yeah, I guess maybe it's the art. Maybe it's the art that kind of gives it the same be. vibe. Partly but they all have the, the for size, me. They all kind of the... got the same vibe, but they're very different. Like Raiders has the you put a worker on, take a worker off thing going on. And yeah. this one's got you build up, you build up a spot, and then they either pull them back or they get thrown in jail, and you have to yeah. get them out of jail. That's pretty interesting. It's a really really solid worker. If you like worker placement games, you owe it to yourself. To play Architects. <laughs> Architects. Architects of the oh, West Kingdom. That's my number 58 and new to the list. So if you're you're following along, if you're paying attention. Now it's old? It's an old game. It's been around, oh, three years or so. It's been holding strong. It went down eight spots, which is. Well, that's not, that's a not That's not a no, bad drop no. from year to year. No. Because we love us. Some Concordia. Oh, Concordia. Yay. This is Concordia Salsa because we like this box better because it's slightly less obnoxious as, than the Concordia box. <laughs> you still have a dude. It's, there's a the thing. <laughs> I'll tell you about the game in a minute. <laughs> this dude is selling salt to this guy. On a salt field. But he can just reach down and maybe someone's guarding all the salt. But this whole thing is salt. 
He could be over here on his little boat and just grab some salt and leave. <laughs> Why is he buying the little... He's thing? a con artist. <laughs> this dude is shady right here. He's trying to sell salt to this guy when there's salt everywhere. Anyway. Concordia Salsa is a Euro game. It's one that I made. It's a 90 minute. Oh, right there. 90 minute. That 90 minute sweet spot mid midweight Euro game. We love it. So basically, you're traveling around the Mediterranean. And you're trading. Well, depends on what map you have. The maps we have, you're traveling around the Mediterranean. Travel around the Mediterranean, and you're, you're trading in the Mediterranean. So basically, you're setting up trading posts. You're getting resources, whole resource management kind of thing. It's got deck building. It's got a little bit of deck building. So you start off with a bunch of crappy cards. Eventually, you can purchase more powerful versions of those cards. And on top of that deck building thing, there's a whole set collection that's going on within that deck building because each one of the cards is a different. Is it a deity? I don't know. There's some. There's different categories of cards. Yeah. And you're trying to get set collections of within those cards. Yeah. What else is going on? All sorts of fun. Well, you got on. kind of area control because if you got the area and you roll those or whatever, you get those areas and they fire off. You get all the resources from that area, plus you're getting victory points from having little huts in those areas and the, the trading yeah. stuff and i mean there's a lot going on yeah on there's that. a there's a mechanism where you can there's like these little tiles you flip over a tile for an area you can get the resource yeah and on the back are gold coins and eventually as people flip over all the cards there's right, more and more coins, coins. someone's eventually going to spend a turn to flip all those cards back over and get all the money and get all the money because it's good but yeah it is hard yeah. as a resource management a little bit of deck building Fun little Euro game. Salsa just adds another resource. I think there's I don't know, four or five different resources. This adds an additional resource. Salt, mm -hmm. and it's I believe or call. We haven't played this in a little while. Uh, it's salt is a wild resource. I want to say. Yeah, it's been a while since we've played. I think it's a wild it resource. I want to say. Yep, it does. I was stuff. right. Look at that. Woo! Look at your memory. Gold star for me. Wild card resource. <laughs> But there's tons and tons of maps. We don't own hardly any. We just got the base game maps, but there's different maps that have work better with this number of players and have this different things going on. But it's got deck building. She loves deck builders. And what, trading what, in the Mediterranean. What, what I can say. And trading in the Mediterranean. But I don't know if you really feel like you're trading in the Mediterranean. It's more, like I said, it's more resource management type things. You're setting up trading posts and things like that. But. No, I think I know what's going on on the cover. I was looking at it. What's that? Clearly... He's a Roman citizen. He's full blown toga. Yeah. This dude's slave worker. He's probably like farm manager, and he's like, mm, "Let me inspect your salt." That's what he's doing. He's not oh. buying it. Oh, so he's this guy. Inspecting. So this guy is the 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 the, the he's the, the minion, the foreman. Yeah. That's running the salt fields. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's sending the salt back to the motherland, and it's not up to up to snuff. It's got too much dirt. That's right. In it. He's about to sock him upside the head with that bag of coins. Yeah, he's like, I'm not going to pay you for this. Anyway. I like that. I like it. I like yeah, it. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> midweek, 90 minute euro, great game. A lot of people's top, tops of their favorite games as well. Concordia, with the salsa, the slightly improved cover of salsa. Spicy. Spicy. Salsa. <laughs> salsa shark. All right. What am I doing? So I guess it's a new game now. My number 58. It's time for a new game. It's time for a new game. And that game is one of my new favorite light economic games. Almost family weight. Like, like it's like, like if this is this is this game, family weight is like the next door neighbor. I don't know about to this that. Game. And that is a raccoon. No way. Tycoon. That is not family weight plus, dude. Man, you think it's less than family weight? It's more. It's not that heavy. There's a lot going on with that whole, like, keeping oh, the economy give going. Me it. All right, I've lost touch with the, the people. You have. <laughs> Good heavens. Raccoon Tycoon. Oh, I love this game. It's so cute. It is pretty awesome. It has one of my favorite game favorite game mechanisms. Yes. And that is how the, the pricing or the economy of the resources work. I love it. I love it. So basically, as... As more and more of these resources uh, are basically, you draw a card. You have cards that you play. It increases the value of resources. So the resources, like yeah. maybe it's worth five per grain. But I drew play a card and it bumps it up to seven, and maybe someone else bump it up to eight and nine. But eventually, someone's gonna get antsy and sell all their grain. Every grain they sell lowers the price by one. So it's a whole kind of push your luck on. Okay, is she gonna sell grain or should I sell my grain now? Or am I gonna hold off until it goes all the way around again? 
But he, he got a lot of grain. He may sell his grain. Anyway, I love that. I love that whole pressure luck thing. In two players, it's not as pressure lucky because there's only one other person. But if you have a whole table full of people, oh my gosh, you play it is full, a full veritable five roller coaster. Players, <laughs> it is like, it, it, yeah, it's like it should, she described it very well. It's a roller coaster of craziness. But I love it because it's got cute little raccoons and little kitties and little puppy dogs. Oh, gotta love it. We're getting bunny rabbits. I'm getting the expansion that has bunny rabbits. <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyway. But, but it's hard. It's a resource management game. You use those resources to buy rail. You basically make money. You make, spend money to get railroad cards. So money for railroad cards. That's a set collection. So you're trying to get a lot of little kitty cats. The more kitty cats you get, the better it is. Or you can use your resources instead of trading them for money. You can use that resources to buy towns. And there's a whole set collection. Each town that couples with a train is gives you points. So you're trying to collect lots of sets of those. You can buy buildings with your cash for extra money. It's got an auction system. So if I want to want to buy the kitty cat, I can't just buy it. I'll say I'll pay five for the kitty cat railroad. Everybody goes, I'll go seven. Joe over here goes ten. I go fifteen. And for reason, you're paying a hundred dollars for that kitty cat railroad. <laughs> Crazy. Love it. <laughs> Love it. So this is like I said, this is like a boiled down version. Take some of those big heavy Euro games with the crazy economy of True. resources. Mulls it down into a family weight plus game. <laughs> Raccoon Tycoon. Oh, I love this game. And I, no. I, I cannot wait for the rabbits. Because when I get the rabbits, Nessa's going to play this game with me. Because she loves rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Love it. It's beautiful. Beautiful game. Here, let's yeah, it is. It's really pretty. I know you saw the back of the box, but it doesn't yeah. do justice to these beautiful cards. Oh my gosh. No, the cards are really pretty. Let's put those back. Pretty wild. You got this start player. The ridiculous start player piece of giant but, piece of wood. Look at this. It's the bunny rabbits. The bunny rabbits. Oh, I didn't know we had some already. We what? have some already. We don't have the uh, we have the Jack Rabbit Railroad. There's another one that's uh, Oh my god. Maybe we already goodness. have the bunny rabbit. We already have the bunny rabbits. <laughs> I didn't even realize it. Look, we got bunny rabbits. But then What's the expansion? The I can't remember what the expansion is. But even though. like the the scenery and stuff, like the scenery cards, they're just really pretty. You got the see, yeah, it's really pretty. The art's amazing. You got the you got the skunk works, skunk works. <laughs> I just love the art. The art with the little critters is priceless, and the 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 wooden bits that they have for this are great. Too. I like this. I like this. They're actually, shaped. I like the fat cat. The fat cat's hilarious. Mm -hmm. cat ride fat. my railroad. Mm -hmm. Is that how he sounds? He's got a little top hat. <laughs> <laughs> how do we already have the bunny rabbits? What's the Kickstarter then? You're hilarious. I'm very confused. Maybe it's bunny rabbit. I, I, I remember I bought this as a this is a was a promo. I think we're we're getting the jack rabbits again with other stuff. Oh, you can't have too many bunnies. You're opening this now? I can't believe I have the bunny rabbits. It's the bunny rabbits. <laughs> Look at this. Look at the bunnies. They're pretty cute. Oh, wait, what else we got? We got more than bunnies. We got... Oh, that's why. Oh, these are towns. Who cares about the towns? Look at just with the bunnies. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Wabow. That's hysterical. Look <laughs> at a little green top hat. Anyway, hilarious. I love the art. Hilarious. Hilarious fun. Oh, my gosh. We're never going to get this closed again. Probably not. Oh, no. What have we done? I can fix that later. Sold, huh? Raccoon Tycoon. So if you're looking for a a lighter, not light, but a lighter economic game, kind of maybe an intro to whole uh, resource management, the whole moving scale, because there's lots of Euro games that use that. Right top of the head, clans of... Caledonia, Caledonia uses that same kind of thing. Gnomes of Zavendor, which is back there somewhere. I don't know where back there. It uses it as well. Off screen. Um, yeah. There you go. All right. So let's move on to my number 55. It was my 50. I didn't say that one was the same. I said it went up. We have one that's the same. It's 55 this time. 55 last time. Hold it strong because it is so side-splitting funny. You ever laugh so hard you have to grab your sides and go, oh, that's what this game is. <laughs> Time's true. up. It's true. Title recall. It is so true. What was that? What was what? I don't know. I think there's, I think there's, a, I think there's a rabbit underneath this table somewhere. I don't know. 
Anyway. <laughs> Time's up, Title Recall. This game is fun. So, there you go. Next. That's it? You're not even going to describe the game? So Time's Up Title Recall is a party game. You can play it in, you play with like two player. You play it in teams, you can play it in many different ways. It's kind of like charades with speed. Charades on speed? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so basically what it is, the game, the game uh, works is that you have a, a deck of cards. You're going to get up in front of everybody. You're going to look at the card. And you're going to do things to get people to guess what's on your card. But it's time. You have like 30 seconds, I want to say. That's why it says time's up. Because you have 30 seconds. And it says on the back, because we always get this wrong, each round you go through all the cards and you are limited in what you can do. So let's read, let's read along together. First round, you can say anything. Different but you game. can't, obviously, say words that are on the card, but you can say anything. Next round... You only get to give one word clue. That's, That's it. The best. That's it. That's one the word. Best. The last round, you can only do. You only can like <laughs> do a pose, like like so, hold a sword or maybe a baseball bat. You can only do a pose. You cannot use any words. It says act it out. You could act it. You don't have to strike a pose and hold it. Well, you know what I mean. I, I was moving my baseball bat around. A sword. Oh. Stabby, stabby. Anyway, it's hilarious. It's fun. Uh, we, oops, 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 oh man, all my boxes are anti Sam Healy boxes. <laughs> so in the game, it basically, like I said, you go through the entire deck of cards. Basically, everyone, everyone, both all the teams use the same deck. Basically, you do through as many as you can, and then the next team shuffles up and they use whatever's left, and you go and go and go until the whole deck's gone. And then again, you proceed to the next round, and you're more limited in what you do. But while this game is funny, because People will do things in that first round that are hysterical, and then it carries over to the next round and then the next round. Someone says something weird or does a do weird like weird pose and oftentimes or something. Oftentimes, it's a mistake or something too, which is and even then, better. Yeah, it has nothing to do with the actual words, yeah. but that becomes the clue yeah. in the later rounds, and you just you just start <laughs> laughing and people 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 get up in front and doing doofy stuff is hilarious. But in our planes of this game, we've discovered that takes a certain type of person <laughs> to play this game. And I am that type of person, but not everyone is this type of person. Because you have to go up and... Act a fool. I was about to say, <laughs> exactly what I was going to say. You have to go up and act the fool. Because that yeah. you, have, you, you have to basically, for lack of a better word, vomit up all this stuff like as quickly as you can. You, have, you, you, can't, you can't go, hmm... What am I going to do with this? Yeah, no, you just got to get Let out there and see. do it. Let me see. I might be able to get the... No, it you're like, you look up. at it and go... Blah, 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 or whatever. That's yeah. pretty much what he does. It is really <laughs> fun trying to figure that out. <laughs> I blew up my box. Look at this. Oh, you're killing me, dude. You're <laughs> that, killing that's, me. That's my number... What is the number? How is did that? you even do that? I don't know. It's my number... 55. 55 last time. 41 the time... Be no, 51 the time before that. 43 the time for that. Because so it's holding strong. It's holding strong. In the middle of the so pack. Good. Literally holding strong because it's the same number as last year. Time's up, Title Recall. There's other versions of the game. There's just but Time's Up. But this is the best. But Title Recall is uh, songs and books and, and movies. movies and things like that. So, other one can just be anything. So, yep. there you go. So, yeah. Let's leave it at that. My number 54 is a new game. New game, new game. Because, you know, alternation. And that is, we're just going to jump right in. No no preamble. That's a shock. Teotihuacan. Woo! City of the Gods. So Teotihuacan Tis is a heavy Euro game. I want to guess it's in that 90 minutes, yeah, 90 minutes sweet spot. Maybe a little longer with more players. But this game's got lots of cool things going on. I can't possibly tell you all the cool things about this game because there's lots of cool things. But at its heart, it is a giant, the whole board is a giant rondelle of action goodness. So you're basically moving around this rondelle with dice. Dice are your workers. And the number on those dice tells you how powerful your action is. And as time goes by, you're going to... They had some fancy word, but basically increase the value of that die. So basically the first time you use it, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Eventually, it's going to ascend. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that's what it's, it's going called. to ascend and go to the city of the dead and give you cool benefits. 
And then you start off with a crappy one die again. Where dice go to die. So you're, you're going to have to, you kind of got to balance keeping those dice at the high level, but deciding when to send that dice off to get the benefits of it. You're moving up tracks that in Euro games. You're getting benefits as you crank up these tracks. You're building up a little temple, basically almost cooperative in a way. It's not cooperative, but you're working together to build the temple, the big the, the temple. I don't do temple. See, there's a temple being constructed here. You're building a temple in the middle that gives you benefits. Again, they're all every single action place on the board is gives you different kinds of benefits. If people, if dice are already there from other players, it costs you to use that space. You can use the space for two things: you can use it for action, or you can use it for a prayer and get thing benefits from that. It's just heavy euro goodness, point salady goodness. Lots of things going on. I really like games where. And a lot of Euro games are this way. You have to decide at what point do I change my yeah, engine scares. from get, being a good engine to cranking out things that give me benefits, right? So this is the same way. You want to crank up the level of those dice and kind of ride them when they're high, but you are going to have to ascend. You don't have to, but it's the benefits. It's the best way to do the it. The benefits yeah. are great if you ascend and get uh, the die and, and get the Stop points and things. You get City of the Dead points, you get a benefit, and all sorts of other things going on. It's just a heavy Euro game that, that plays in 90 minutes. It's just solid. Any game that's on my top shelf up here, it's heavy Euro game, and it's from, that's right, I think it came from right there. See that space, the open space right there? Yep, yep. That's where it came from. Look at you. Heaviest games. Are over. Oh, no, this isn't it. It's up there. You can't even see it. It's the top shelf that's way up there. Anyway. <laughs> I, I have all the heavy, heavy, heavy games way up the top. And this this is right there in the middle of all those. Yep. Love it. It's funny because it's deceptive. I didn't think of it as being this heavy until we got into the rules and stuff. It didn't sound because like it's as heavy as it every is. Every one of those action spaces is very unique. Yeah, it all does. It has the whole rules of the, you have to pay if people are already there. Yeah. It has all those tracks you can move up. It yeah. has the rules on building the temple. There's ways the tiles are placed. You get benefits on the orientation of the tiles because if you cover up certain symbols, yeah. you get certain benefits. You have the City of the Dead where you're getting benefits from that. Ascending the dice. Yeah. There is just, there's a, it's there's a, a lot more it's to a, it than It's a it heavy first. Euro game. There's yeah. a lot going on. Yeah. I love it, because, but it plays fairly quickly. It, says it does, actually. An hour and a half to two hours. Yeah. Um, and it has a solo mode, it says. Really solid, solid Euro game. If you like Euro games, you got to try it. Teo Teo Hua Hua Con. That's a bit of an inside joke. Anyway. All right, old game, one of my favorites. It's dropped quite a bit because we haven't played it in a while. I have. I haven't played it. See, I told you you cheat. I just peek right now. I told you. I just she, peeked now. I told. See, the other day, I caught her peeking over at my stack, <laughs> and she said, "I didn't look. I didn't." Look. I didn't she look. just. It just happened. I just, just did. Just now, I did she just looked. Now. Anyway. I admit it. Anyway, I haven't played this game in a while. I admit it. This one's dropping a little bit because I love this game. It's one of my favorites. It's number 53, so I, you know I still love it. But it's dropping because there's so many great social deduction games out there. There is just so many amazing social deduction games. So it's kind of slowly creeping down the list. Oh, I'm sure it'll find a spot at some point because I love it. Because it's hilarious. I laugh. I love games that make me laugh. I love the games that make me trick people. Trickery. And it's, it's best when, like... Your seven-year-old or eight-year-old now daughter tricks you in this game. It is hilarious. <laughs> she lied to me in Sheriff of Nottingham. Sheriff of Nottingham. Yeah, this game is ridiculous. I love this game. It's hilarious. It's a social, like I said, it's a social deduction game. It's more of a bluffing game, but yeah, I guess there's deduction involved too, and it's social. So social deduction, I don't know. More of a bluffing bluffing and negotiation game than, than anything. Yeah. So basically you are uh, a, a, a humble merchant. You're trying to deliver your goods into Nottingham. You must pass by the sheriff. So you take a, a little bag, you put your goods in the bag, and you hand your bag to the sheriff and say, I've got something in my bag. It could be apples, chickens, whatever, whatever's in your bag. I have three chickens, and you give it to them. Now they have the quandary of deciding... Are you telling the truth? Or are you lying? <laughs> and that's that's it. But that's not it. Beyond all that, <laughs> there's the the reverse psychology. It's like, oh yeah, sure, open my bag. I dare you. Or I'll pay you a dollar. Or I'll even give you money to open my bag. How about that? Or wait, I'll give you five money to open everyone else's bag, but let mine go through. So there's whole negotiation, money, bluffing, craziness. 
the whole goal is to get as much goods as valuable goods through. You got, like I said, there's four basic goods. You're trying to get lots of those. Those are worth money, and whoever gets the most of those gets a bonus. But there's also contraband goods. That's why this game has the whole bluffing thing, because if there's all worth legal goods... Double the can, victory points for those. Contrabands are worth a lot of money, but if you get caught sending those in, you lose a lot of money. So <laughs> uh, We got like every expansion, like every promo in the world for this game. It's We, just, we love it. It's a lot of fun. This is was this Caitlin's favorite game last time she made her list? I think so. I think I made her list two years ago. Not this year, but last year. I think yeah. it, it may have been her favorite game. She at con she'll run off and play this with, with yeah, a group of random people. Yeah, she'll go and play it. It's so great. This it's is so a awesome. hit at her game, My game Marco group. Yep. game craziness or whatever it's called. What's it yeah, called? Marcos and board games. Yeah, that too. Yeah, yep. they love it too. Yep. Ness is playing this game by herself. It blows my mind. I mean, she before she would have like a teammate. They work together. Now she plays, like I said, she plays by herself, and she does really well. She, she tricks me all the time. It's funny. That's hilarious. You, you're so snowed by her. She usually <laughs> tells the truth. Usually. Usually. And then when you when, when she gets in the habit of truth, 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 she starts sneaking stuff through, and you're like, what? <laughs> She's so proud of herself. Katie, too, and is like, I got stuff through. Yeah, that's pretty cute. It's a fun game. It's But again, like you'll see a lot of, a lot of my, a lot of my games, not all of them, but a lot of my games are... Very interactive, very, you have to be social, you have to be out there. Um, and this is one of them. You, I guess you can kind of take a step back and just kind of oh, yeah, you don't have not to talk and not pander yeah, you don't have and not to. Not to no, you take, don't have to. It's just not quite as... A, flaw, a, a lot of people say the flaw in the game is that if you always tell the truth, you always win. I no. highly disagree with that statement. I win not with all the, the time. for sure. I win all the time and I almost never tell the truth. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's not true anymore, especially with the expansion, um, because there's just so many like really, really good points and things to be had from not telling the truth that it's not as good as it used to be. There you go. That, so that is my number fifty-three. My signed by the famous Scott Morris. <laughs> is it famous or infamous? <laughs> I'm gonna infamous. say I'm gonna say infamous Scott Morris. <laughs> <laughs> totally signed my game. Yes. Good old Scott. There Scott's you go. Awesome. Sheriff of Nottingham. <laughs> all right. Last of the new ones. We've been alternating. This is the fourth new one this time around. This is like brand spanking new. We played this one recently. Okay. And I dressed up for this game at our Halloween costume party show. Say what? I had a, I had a weird spider on my head. Ah, I know what game Four this is. Four dominant species. This game is intense. I love this game. This is way heavier than I thought. I never realized, just from the way people talked about it, how heavy this game was. This is a heavy game. This is a heavy game. This is a this is a big boy. This is a big boy game. You gotta, <laughs> you, if you this is, this you gotta put you gotta put on your big boy Euro pants to play this game. <laughs> boy, I'm fresh out of those. So that, so this is a worker play. I don't know why we didn't get this before. I heard it was horrible. Two players. We played it two players. We had fun. It worked just fine. Yeah. I mean, I, I could see where there would be a lot more interaction, a little more weirdness going on with more players, but we played it two players. worked great. We had plenty the, of interaction. The map's kind of constricted, I think, if I recall correctly, with two players. Yeah. So at heart, it's a worker placement game. You're basically placing your workers on the board, and you're using that to basically put cubes. You're putting cubes out on a map, so the map starts out small. It kind of grows and grows and grows and grows. And you're doing area control. So it's it's worker placement with area control. But it's a lot more than that. So it has one of the coolest things I like in worker placement games. You'll see this. This is in Pillars of the Earth. This is in Age of Empires. You start off, you have all these worker placement stops, spots that go from top to bottom. And they fire off from top to bottom. So again, like I said in a recent game that I talked about, you can use stuff that you gain early on to pay for stuff that you get down at the bottom. So you kind of got this puzzle aspect. It's like, okay, if I want to do this thing at the bottom, I'm going to need this, these things to happen. So I have to put workers up here. And if there's a risk here because you go put on the bottom spot first, you may you got to make sure you get the spots you need at the top. So yeah. it's kind of a whole planning thing. Then it's got area control on the board. Basically, the, the animals, there's different species, dominant species. There's six different species. Six? Six different species. I think so, yeah. They all have a superpower. So there's basically sections of worker placement. They have superpowers. So they, they have they influence one of those areas on the worker placement slightly different. They also have different starting uh, stuff that they have. Um, you start in an area on the board, you're going to kind of spread out from that area, taking control. There's an ice age happening, so there's an ice spot in the middle, and it's going to slowly creep out, and it destroys the animals and kills the animals as you go. So 
the worker placement on those are a little more difficult, but at the same time, they're more valuable yeah. when you control those spots. So I've talked a lot, but it's a heavy Euro. But it's really, we're, yeah, talk, it's, we're talking like it's like a three to four hour Euro game, if, and that's if you know what you're doing. Um, it's just really cool. I love it. Um, but I, love it is, it, I, I just was fascinated at how thematic. Like they were able to pull that off with yeah. the weight of this game. This is another one of those that has a really good theme yeah. attached to it. I mean, what it is. yeah, the weaker species are more delicate, but they they, they expand quicker and it's, it's yeah, got, it's, it's, got, it's got, well balanced it's got, for being it's so. Got, it's got some. It's very symmetrical. like I said, it's very very thematic yeah. in how it works. Cool. So we were talking about. Couldn't remember the, all the different creatures when we were talking about it during the costume parties. Here we mm, go. Okay. Insect. Okay. Arachnid. Yep. Spider. That's why I had a spider man. That's it. Amphibian, bird, okay, reptile, which is mammal. Oh, mammals was the last one. Okay, I couldn't remember. So they have they have they have different areas, terrains they're better at, and they're like I said, they're generally weaker to stronger, but they have different powers. Yeah, it was really cool. It's a great one. It's a bazillion cubes. I love I love how I love GMT games. So I don't have a lot of GMT games. So this is like heavy Euro game. Probably it's probably. That's pretty high up. Top five or six heaviest games we have. Complexity level. Medium. <laughs> <laughs> you know that they make war games and stuff when they if say that's a when medium? they say when a heavy euro heavy euro game is medium. Wow. <laughs> that's funny. But anyway, I if you're looking for that. for a, a beefy, like I mean like like mm. mammal like mammal meaty meat <laughs> meat meaty mammal beefy <laughs> Euro game. Huh. With okay. lots of crazy attacky interaction going yeah. on, this might be the game for you. It might be. It's pretty darn good. Game of the Year Award 2011. Wow. I didn't realize it was that old either. There you go. <laughs> and that was, like I said, that was new. We recently played it this last summer, I think. I finally... finally no, we just played finally, it like a month or two ago. I finally bit the bullet. And really, it was on sale. I get a little... Getting little notifications. I shouldn't get these notifications. But I do get notifications when stuff, game, board games go on sale. This one went on sale, so I grabbed it up pretty cheap. On the cheap, because I've been waffling on whether to get it, because I heard it wasn't good two-player. It's a great two-player. Forget all those people. Last one this time around. This is the lesser brother of the... Some people call them bag builders, but you're really not building a bag. Mm. Stuff in... Stuff... Tokens in a bag game? <laughs> That okay. increase the number you have in that bag. Bag builder. Altaplano! Ooh, me likey. Altaplano! So this is a bag builder. I don't know what the real, what's the real term for it. Bag? Drawer? I don't know. Bag puller? So this one is, is a... Uh, bag? Let's say a growing line of, of type of game. The... the Basically, it's basically a deck builder, but you're putting tokens in a bag. Um, this one's a true, more of a true deck builder than the other game that I'm talking about that I don't name. Because when you, as you pull the tokens out, you put them in a, a bin off to the side. When your bag's empty, you put them all back in. Yeah. So you're basically, basically that's the equivalent of cycling through. through your entire deck and then shuffling up yep. and, put, put, okay. and, and going again. Whereas the other games, you'll use all, you pull from the bag, you, as you use them, you put them directly back in the bag. So it's not really a deck really builder. Random, it's yeah. kind of a, it's a random randomizing of what you have. I mean, it's like it's like if you have your you're just pulling you're basically resetting your deck every time, kind of. But anyway, this yeah. one is a true deck builder style game. It has all these little islands. I call them islands, but they're different locations on the board. You got a little worker guy that's traveling around the board, interacting with those locations. It's resource management. You're basically turning those resources into more valuable resources. Fulfilling contracts, doing all sorts of things to get victory points is point salady, but at its heart, it's the whole manipulation of your bag, deck, whatever you want to call it. Because there's ways to cull things out of your deck and get points by putting them in a warehouse or a storage place. Yeah. So the whole thing is kind of manipulating that that bag to get to be able to utilize the resources that you need to do all the other things that are going on. But each location, I don't know if you can see, but there's always different it's like a circle of islands. Yeah. A horrible. This is a backwards circle. I'll get it. There we go. Circle of islands. <laughs> I call them islands because they look like islands. Reminds me of the... They do look like Like islands. Luna has the different yeah, locations. Yeah, Luna. Yeah. It Each one look, of them yeah. gives you different resources and you can take different actions at the spot. And then you have your little board 
kind of like in your in the other game that shall not be named yet. Um, you're putting all your little tokens that you're drawing out of your bag on that spot in order to influence the place, but your worker needs yeah. to be at the spot to, to get the stuff at that location. I like the art with this game, too. I think it's really beautiful, and it's really bright and colorful, and it's just... I like, like you said, about the bag building with this one. I feel like it's better because you do actually cycle through, and the stuff that you've created in your little engine is actually going to get to be played. You know, you don't know if you're going to get to play it with that other game. And this one you do, you'll eventually get to use it. Even I said, I've said one. it many times in this section. It's the 90-minute sweet spot game. Yep. Um, so here's all the little tokens. You'll see. But what I want to show you... pieces of sun. What I wanted to show you... What I'll show you is that the last game we played, I won. But that's not what I'm going to show you. <laughs> it has the weirdest star player marker. Oh my gosh, yes it does. That's what I wanted to show you. Where's the little wheelbarrows? Yeah, yeah, these little carts. Are they cute? That's where you put your little tokens. Yeah, our tokens go in there. I'm going to get them together here in a second. Fred the... Fred the alpaca, alpaca that doesn't stand up right. Oh, we got back up. Back up, back up. There we go. Oh. Yeah, but pick him up. Oh, he's, ah! behaving. he's behaving. Yeah, that's what happens usually when you pass the first player token. <laughs> <laughs> this one's the lame one, isn't it? Wait a second. Actually, actually. the first player token thing. If I want every time, I want oh that gosh. one. Oh Probably. I, that. I have one every time. Wow. Undefeated. That's why it's so high on my list. Is that so? <laughs> hmm. Oh, I don't well, think what so. Can you, here's the bag that you build. <laughs> No, it's a really fun game. I love it. That's the last one for it. this time, it. right? That was it. Number that 51. The, the number one game in the bottom half of my list. Altaplano. It's a pretty good game. There Solid. You go. Solid. There you go. There wow. you go. There you go. All right, it was a preview. We're on the, we're on the other side of the sheet. Ooh. We're previewing my 50 to 41. Okay. Here we go. This is a crazy This is a crazy section of my list. Let me look. Make sure. Sure, I'm not crazy. Ah, oh, that's true. You are crazy. Crazy section. Here, listen to all the stuff that's going on. Okay. In this section. One new game. Only one new game. Three that went down. So what does that tell you? Five games in this section went up. Half of the games in this next section that's coming up went up. Isn't that crazy? And one stayed exactly the same. So effectively... Another one went is exactly, exactly the same. Exactly the same. Five games that went up. Man, I told you that resolution was going to hit hard. I'm intrigued. I told you. I am intrigued. I told you that resolution See, reminded me resolution. how much I love some of these games. And that's this it. really cool. That's right. it for this. We're halfway. We're halfway, folks. Only halfway to go. I guess that's how it works if you're halfway. Yeah. You have halfway to go. Bye!